We began yesterday by looking at the uh, first of the seven I am's found in the book of John, the Gospel of John, that uh, describe the nature of Jesus, the, these I am statements that Jesus himself makes concerning himself, is uh, are, are things that tell us uh, something of the very nature, the very depth, the very essence of Jesus Christ himself. And so they're very valuable to us, very important for us to understand. And again, I would encourage you not simply to read these statements and say, oh, that's very beautiful, that's uh, poetic almost, but to meditate upon the meaning behind them. Uh, Jesus was not trying to impress them, impress them with his wisdom. He was telling them something about true life. He's telling us something about true life. And yesterday we saw that he says, I, I am the bread of life, and if you come to me, you'll never hunger. And so he is the, the essence of what we need for our souls. Uh, he, he, he satisfies the true spiritual hunger that you and I all have. Nothing but Jesus Christ can do that. And so how important it is to know that he is the bread of life. <clears throat> we press on today by looking at chapter 8, verse 12, and a, another statement, and that is that he is the light of the world. So the statement itself is chapter 8, tw verse 12. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world, and he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so we see that he is the light of the world here. But let's back up into, into the context to see why that would be impressive to these people. If you go back all the way to chapter 7, verse 2, you'll find that he's making this statement at the time where they were celebrating the, tab the Feast of Tabernacles <clears throat> or the Feast of Booths. Uh, this is one of the, the major feasts. There are several feasts in the, in the Old Testament that the Jews kept, but three that they were, were bigger and more important than others and were actually mandated for the adult men to show up at Jerusalem and celebrate these if they could. Uh, this one, uh, the purpose of the Feast of Tabernacles or Booths was to be a constant reminder yearly to the people of Israel of the time they wandered in the wilderness of those times when they actually lived in tents and, and, and booths and so forth. And so each year they would come together. They would make uh, stick huts, more or less, just kind of camp out type of thing. And they would live in those during the time that they were at the feast, which lasted a week. And so they could live in those uh, little huts that they made for up to a week at a time. And the point was they, they didn't have the comforts of home. They didn't have the comforts of their bed or whatever. They, they lived in a very primitive, uh, very uh, difficult circumstance to remind them of how the Lord had brought them out of Egypt and had led them through the wilderness. Now, one of the big major features of the Feast of Booths was a lighting of a, of a like, gigantic, a large menorah that would uh, give out light. And that light, again, would remind them that throughout their time in the wilderness, uh, throughout all those years, those those 40 years in the wilderness, they were led by the light of God. You recall that during the day there would be a cloud over the tabernacle, and they would follow that tabernacle and that cloud wherever it would, would go. At night, uh, there would be a fire over the tabernacle, and if the Lord wanted to move them at night, they would follow that. But the whole point is that they, they did not know where they were going except by the direction and the light of God. And so the, food, the, the, the Feast of Booths taught them that and reminded them of that yearly. So Jesus is at the Feast of Booths or Feast of Tabernacles when he makes this statement. And that gives it a lot more context and a lot more texture than simply making a statement in a random place. So when we go back to our verse of Scripture, and it says, and he's speaking at this time, he might have even been pointing to the menorah at this point, and saying, look, there's that great light, symbolic of God leading and directing you throughout all those years in the wilderness. But I want to say to you, I am the light of the world. Not that menorah, not, uh, not the, the, what it symbolizes, but I am. I embody uh, what that symbolizes, the light of the world. And he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So, as the, as the light in the wilderness led the people through that, that wilderness, uh, ultimately to the place of promise, and it had a, a great purpose. They would be lost without it. But Jesus says, I do more than that. 
I, I bring light to the in the darkness of this world, and and you can have in me the light of life. Do you want life? Jesus says that life will be found in me and in the light that I give you. So Jesus says, I am the light of the world. How important that is to us today.